So from the general modeling aspects now to the modeling, the control view, modeling the center view of our RS house. Let's look at an example. Um, the example is that you purchased some goods, you purchased some goods which you need for your production process maybe. And there is you have a department or you have a you have a process step in your in your production process where you say incoming goods um, goods are received and you somehow have to check them, you somehow have to register what was received. So incoming goods department is maybe the place where it uh, where it happens when when you receive the, the goods and you have to perform some steps if you actually do the receiving, if you actually do the checking. And then maybe you have a user that clicks through the uh, activities, through the transactions. And if we, if we say transaction, then this refers to the SAP terminology where you refer to functions, to user functions as transactions. Transaction is then uh, to to, to activate and you can you can choose the transaction and you can work with that transaction in order to fill out some data into the form or you view some some data from the system and there is you interact with the system a transaction for interaction with the system and in this case where you receive the goods you may, might have a transaction incoming goods and if you say that you have a transaction incoming goods, then this refers to the functional view. In our RS house on the right side, the functional view, the functional view where you, um, where you systematically show what functions you need in your software. So incoming goods would be one transaction, one function which you need in your software. You activate transaction incoming goods if you work on the incoming goods workstation and if you receive some goods. So the first step then might be that you want to know about the purchase order and uh, you want to know about the the amount, the product maybe, uh, which was ordered and therefore you uh, get the data of the purchase order onto your screen, you request some data from the system and uh, you first would then check your incoming goods, your, your incoming goods, which are right before you. Um, you would check them if they match to the purchase order. The ID, maybe the ID of the purchase order, the, um, the type of the product, the number of the products. And um, this activity then refers to the functional view on the on the one side, the functional view, which somehow should enable you in with the function to extract data from the database, to get some data, to make requests from the database. So you you would uh, have some functional wise support from your system. And on the other hand, you would refer to the data view, the data view because you refer to data obviously in the database. Data important for your process and you get them from the database. So in the background, there's a data model, maybe modeled with an entity relationship model, and these data then are important for your process. Important to um, show you what actually is important for that purchase order. In the third step, then the user might modify the data for the incoming goods. So maybe the user fills out just a receive date or a receive date is automatically filled out if you, um, if you activate the function. Or maybe the user modifies the number of products. Maybe it's a, it's a partial delivery. Uh, only a part of the uh, total amount is delivered. Then you would modify the data for the incoming goods. You would modify such that only this 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 partial delivery is
registered and that some other delivery might come later on. So modifying data, uh, this also refers to functional view because you have to uh, have the possibility to modify some data. And the next step, the fourth step, is then that you save the data, you save the data which you modified maybe before. Um, this saving refers again to a functional aspect of your software. So you have to have the ability to save data in the database and talking about the database also means you refer to the data view, you refer to the, your data model, which is important in this part for the goods you receive, for the purchase order, for the data, which somehow um, are related to these activities for the incoming goods. And finally, uh, the user also is an element of the organizational view on top of the RS house. Um, and this is then important to, uh, to assign these, uh, this uh, human resources, uh, this, this organizational element, so to say, to a certain activity. So an activity which is somehow um, maybe named um, check incoming goods um, would be performed by a user who is in the department of the um, incoming goods department. So basically, this might be an example process and you somehow would have to control these process. You somehow would model with uh, certain process steps and you see that there are references to other views like the functional view, the data view and the organizational view, other views which are important in the RS house. And now without going uh, much deeper into the three layers, we do not want to, uh, to go into the implementation here, but at least to, to, to show these layers uh, at the example of the, of the control view, we look into the three levels, we, we look into the three layers. Um, the first layer, the business related concept, mm, obviously, um, we have certain process steps. They are somehow important for the uh, performance of the business process. And uh, we will model these process steps with event-driven process chains, abbreviation EPC. And this is actually a tool on this business layer, on this business-related concept. So as the, as the stakeholder for the process, <clears throat> it would be very easy to model the process in this EPC. There are also uh, UML diagrams, um, uh, methods, uh, approaches available for modeling these, uh, these steps. Um, and finally, what you actually use for modeling depends on the people, how, what method are the people uh, used, to, uh, used to apply in, in such a modeling task so um, mostly it's epc was applied but sometimes uh, the uml diagrams also might be uh, available um, uml diagrams actually are uh, are more uh, more used in the, in the computer science field so uh, it's not that usual uh, in the in the, in the business departments. The second layer then, the data processing concept layer, um, would uh, deal with the transaction design. And if you look onto the uh, incoming goods department on this uh, incoming goods uh, functionality, then you would have to think about your hardware topology, your infrastructure, your IT infrastructure, which, which is important for this incoming goods um, department and uh, you you might then see that um, hmm, uh, maybe you have mobile devices maybe you have a fixed PC on the incoming goods uh, workstation it actually depends on your goods are they uh, are they easy to move to a fixed station that you um, could move the 
the, the, the lightweight goods, so to say, to the PC, or is it is it easier to to use a mobile device and uh, to 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 move this mobile device uh, to the goods? Maybe if you have uh, large goods or large containers, you want to check, you want to somehow register, then it's easier to use mobile devices. If you use mobile devices, then uh, this aspect of distributed systems comes into play. On the, on the business related concept, you don't have to think about the distributed system. You just would say there is some, um, some functionality required in the incoming goods department. And maybe you say that it should be done in a mobile way, but the term distributed system is not important on the business related layer. You would introduce the distributed systems term uh, in the data processing concept because there you have to think about also uh, required uh, synchronization which might happen between the mobile device and the core infrastructure to let's say uh, synchronize the scanned data immediately with the core system such that you immediately know that these goods which are on the uh, on the goods uh, received department now, they are received and they are they're okay, either okay or they are not okay. Maybe it's not the right amount, maybe it's not the right product. And you also would think in more detail about triggers, triggers for your transaction. So it's not only about uh, talking, talking about the state, a certain state of your enterprise, some goods are received. You might also think about the trigger. Maybe uh, such a functionality is triggered by scanning a barcode and then the, um, the technology stack, so to say, starts to process your data. And finally, if you look into the implementation of such a control view, then you would create um, a chart somehow create a chart uh, standing for the um, execution of the computer program and then you would try to uh, to realize to implement this chart such that the conceptual um, conceptual transaction or conceptual sequence of the of the process steps is realized in software Here we will only deal with a business related concept. We will deal with event driven process chain and we will then know that this event driven process chain is a kind of requirements analysis and the first step in the uh, implementation, in the, in the design of the software until the implementation can happen. In the upper layers, in the business related concept, and the stakeholders are more the uh, stakeholders of the, of the business process, so the people uh, executing the business process. And in the second and third layer, in the second and third um, part of this layered structure, the computer science related employees are responsible because they have to design the software and they have to finally implement the software. Now the first step in our EPC approach is to have a rough view on the modeling constructs which are available for us in EPC. So the first construct is the function, the function where obviously something happens some functionality is performed. Second is the event, the event which refers to some, some state or some state change um, within, the, um, within the enterprise. And this state change also maps then to the software. You have logic links, you somehow have to connect the elements and you control the flow, you control the flow of the uh, different um, different functions 
and therefore you have some constructs for controlling this flow. The result of this process of this EPC modeling is that you have a kind of sequence of functions and events. You have a sequence which means that functions are performed after each other and in between there are events happening or there are certain state changes happening and these state changes are represented by events. And there is you have a time of, uh, you have a kind of temporal logical series so the the time the, the temporal aspect is important you do the functions after each other and after here means that uh, there is some time spent in one function and after um, working with the first function you can work on the second function so a temporal aspect and the logical aspect is uh, there in two because you also have to uh, take care about the uh, the, the, the sense uh, which uh, which makes a certain sequence and therewith the the logic the, the logical dependencies between functions um, which are requires uh, you also have to map them onto your sequence which you develop with your EPC modeling approach and basically if you finally then have this EPC diagram, this EPC model, then you finally have a core part of your RS house. You have the control view, which is important for your information system, or at least for your uh, business process, which should be performed, which should be supported by the information system. So control view, control view, as one essential part of this RS house model. And here in the in the lower right corner you see that uh, this um, control view is obviously in the center of the RS house like we discussed before.